Ever since the dawn of entertainment, reviews, to one degree or another, have been subject to latent biases, prevailing attitudes, shills, and the dark arts of Hollywood. These days, however, things have taken a uniquely terrible turn. Online ratings and reviews have become the latest proxy in the culture wars. There are some reviewers who, feeling that a show relates to their own experience, and that, by some vague connection, their own ideals and the way they and those ideals are perceived, are bound up in the prestige or fortunes of such shows, and will often let impulses to promote such content beyond its actual worth get the better of them. It seems that there are lots of people preemptively trying to inflate a show or film's percentages on sites like Rotten Tomatoes, in anticipation of people driven by different ideological impulses coming in shortly after to do their best to deflate those numbers. If a show is intended to appeal to so-called wine moms, for example, then reviewers will sometimes be prompted by overt or half-conscious associations to post in defense of the show and its themes. A recent example is She-Hulk Attorney at Law, with the online reviewers giving it a healthy 87%, whilst it only scraping in at a bare 50% amidst the wider viewing audience, for an astonishing differential of 37%. It would be naive to entirely attribute this to taste and not see ideological gripes and pent-up preconceptions influencing things. On the other hand, men who might feel that male characters have become wimpier and flakier in the hands of modern screenwriters with little life experience and one or two axes to grind may latch onto some middling or half-decent show in which a solid traditional male lead acts with agency and courage and then extol that show in a way disproportionate to its merits, irrespective of whether it might be riddled with cliches, be too testosterone-driven or just plain conventional in its dialogue and tropes. An example here would be The Terminal List, which establishment reviewers deigned to give a dire 39%, whilst the wider general public seemed to claim it as the greatest thing since Citizen Kane, with a whopping 95%, a differential of 56%. The most lively and contentious example, most intensely reflecting wider societal and cultural tensions about diversity, representation, and rehashing of prior beloved entertainment, is The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. The establishment reviewers have given it a healthy 84%, whereas, as it stands right now, a crazy differential of 47%. In this sense, aggregating sites like IMDB and Rotten Tomatoes are in many cases just acting as extensions of the upvote and downvote features on YouTube, where people, en masse, can weigh in on entertainment in a way that is just as partisan and identity-driven as every other aspect of society. This emerging trend is an inevitable side effect of the wider malaise of Hollywood screenwriting's on-the-nose identity politics, projected in the form of clumsily or stridently imposed empowerment, undeserved payoffs of wish fulfillment and fight scenes and monologues, and overweening efforts by screenwriters to reflect the real world, irrespective of whether the contexts are incongruous or not. Depending on your ideology and societal perceptions, you might view the casting of a black actress as an 11th century Danish Viking noblewoman as empowering and fitting, or an odd imposition of identity politics, which could somewhat influence your rating the streaming series Vikings Valhalla at either 90% or 50%. Remember how former wrestler Gina Carano got fired from that lame Disney Star Wars streaming show? Depending on your perspective on that incident, you might not even have known she was in a film called Terror on the Prairie, or you might have judged that film a modern triumph of cinema. Sadly, this dynamic is likely to get worse, with many people assuming, or even wishing, that the percentages and ratings many newly released shows and films are registering are somehow not on the level, and that many interpretations of entertainment have been subsumed into wider interpretations of society, leading to a dreadful relativism in which a consensus about the merits of some newly released content is going to be blurred, and come with a huge asterisk.